Hello, I'm Ken Burrell from Pragmatic PMO. This is one of a series of videos expanding on the Success Stories Shared initiative started in South Africa by Linky van der Merwe of Virtual Project Consulting and Louise Worsley of Pi Cubed, and which has their enthusiastic support. Aldous Huxley said that men do not learn very much from the lessons of history is the most important of all the lessons of history. Project management research has shown that project managers prefer to learn by face-to-face -face interaction rather than from searching through lessons learned databases. I think that project managers can learn a lot from each other's success stories and also from sharing their scars. So, as part of my campaign for real project managers, on your behalf, I'm talking to some real project managers I've had the pleasure of working alongside so that you can benefit from their experience. Today, I'm delighted to have with me Mark Ferguson, who's going to share some of his experiences with us. Mark, I'd like you to start by introducing yourself and giving us a flavour of your background and how you got into project management. Uh, my name is Mark Ferguson. I've been in project management for probably about I don't know, 20 years now. Mm -hmm. um, I actually got into project management through the route of being a programmer. So I started off life as a programmer, uh, thought about whether I should carry on doing the coding aspect of that. Uh, was never very good, quite frankly. So I decided what else could I do. So I actually got an opportunity when I was about 25, 26, which is not long after I left university, with a company to look at uh, the PMO part of being a project manager, which was quite a good introduction into what it's like to be a project manager. So uh, with that company, I looked at the various things around uh, how you run a project, but more from supporting project managers at that point and then moving into being a project manager after that. Um, what that helped me do was learn the fundamentals of what a project's about without necessarily throwing me in the deep end of here's a project and learn on the fly about what it means to manage one. Yeah, I got into it that way. Uh, I've been doing it ever since, slowly building up into bigger projects, uh, programs eventually. Um, and at this point, I'm working for a large retailer uh, on a large program, a 40 million pound program, delivering that over multiple years. Can you give us an example of um, a success story? So something that you do regularly on projects that contributes to success? I would say never start a project unless you're clear where the money's coming from, who's your key stakeholder, uh, your sponsor, um, are they on board? Does the wider organisation understand what you're trying to achieve with this project? Um, it, do you have support from the executive if it's a big project or program? Um, really, you have to establish all those things before you even consider taking it on. Earlier in my career, I would take stuff on just because I was young, uh, keen to get ahead, do the right thing by the organisation. Press somebody. Yeah, press somebody, <laughs> but never really, ne never really challenge. Well, should we be doing this at all? Or if we did it another way, it might be more successful. I think the role of the project manager especially when you're a bit earlier on in your career is more people are less uh, confident probably to just to challenge and say yeah. why, why why are we doing this whereas nowadays i think there's a responsibility on project managers because the world gets ever more competitive costs get ever more tighter to challenge back and say we shouldn't really be doing this but that's where a good pmo comes in to help as well quite frankly there should have been a process a project had gone through before a project managers even really on it mm -hmm. quite frankly to say do we want to do this as an organization right? you know by the time you're there standing up a team mobilizing a project um, it should have been through a number of levels of governance for it to even be signed off to, to start ramping a team up the other thing that people often don't do that you should do is give yourself enough time to mobilize a project team uh, often it's uh, and I made a mistake myself quite a few number of times was when you're planning the project out you never give yourself enough time at the start to get that team in place so you know no matter the size of the project or the program if it's a program you're going to need more time to get your core team in place so your pmo people if you've got different work streams who are the pms who are going to go on that work stream do you need to get people out of the business to help you um, if you do that's a negotiation with people within the business because you're taking away people from their day jobs they'll normally want you to backfill them again that'll come with a cost so there's all that sort of stuff that people tend to forget mm -hmm. it tends to come back and bite you unless you do it properly up front 
Okay, so thinking back over your experience, can you give us an example of something that went wrong, what you learned from it? Yeah, so when I was uh, with a large consulting firm, um, we were asked to come in and uh, mobilise a Solvency 2 programme. So for those of you who don't work in the world of insurance, Solvency 2 was a large uh, regulatory initiative that thankfully for most insurance companies has been delivered now. Uh, but at the time it was the largest game in town quite frankly uh, uh, and we had to go into a very large bank and mobilize the program um, I was relatively early on in my career so it was a bit gung-ho it was a bit and you know I was at a consulting firm where people tend to think they know the answer to everything um, and what I didn't do there was spend enough time getting to know the stakeholders you're talking a hundred million pound program Getting that thing up and running across multiple business units is no mean feat. The challenge really was getting the different business units to play ball. This is a bank where there had been recent acquisitions, it was coming off the back of the financial crisis, so there was a lot going on in financial services at that point anyway. So my real mistake there was to think, well I'm sitting at the group level, so therefore people shall do what I say. Right. And really people are always really looking for what's in it for them so it's taking the time to explain well why are we doing this project what are the benefits of any you know you think about something like solvency 2 people always thought it was just a regulatory mm -hmm. bit of work that had to be done it was a real pain there's no benefits um, but actually we took the time to understand well if we do this properly then there are significant financial benefits to doing solvency 2 well um, and it will deliver benefits in terms of reporting for the wider organisation, If you, use, you can use your capital better. Um, working all that stuff out up front and getting the stakeholders from the various business units bought in was something that I had to do after the fact when the programme wasn't going anywhere. So I learned a lesson really in terms of, although you can operate at a certain level in terms of seniority or within an organisation, whether if it's a big organisation at the group level, you still got a lot of stakeholders you need to convince to go along in the journey. Um, I think that sort of learning only comes with time, quite frankly. I think you need to sort of make the mistake yourself and learn that one. People can tell you it, um, but often you have to learn it the hard way. What alerted you to the fact that something was going wrong? Well, I was gleefully going along and reporting on how well we were doing in terms of the programme and getting it mobilised. Uh, Whereas in the background, only that I only found out later there was the various business units were trying to torpedo it and do their own thing. Um, so often in the world of projects and programs, you'll get people telling you one thing to your face as a project program manager and doing exactly the opposite behind the scenes. Um, and the only way of really surfacing that was to get to know the people a bit better and really understand how they were working on the ground. Uh, so you have to take the, t it goes back to taking the time to get to understand your stakeholders. Um, and it was only when I started doing that that I got the real picture on the ground, rather than what I was being told sitting in the ivory tower getting the reports that were green every week. Yeah. Um, that That's the difference I think, getting out there and talking to people. So was that talking to senior people or the people are reporting into them? So initially I was talking to the senior people, so you, you, I was at the level of talking to managing directors, heads of in terms of getting the programme mobilised in their areas. Um, again it came back to getting the PMO established properly and really getting alongside them getting under the covers of what was going on on the ground. Mark thanks for that. So we've heard from Mark today about how he's recovered from something that went wrong and about what he does on projects to make them work well. Anton Chekhov said, knowledge is of no value unless you put it into practice. I believe the value of learning comes not just from documenting the past but from changing what we do in the future. So my challenge to you is, what can you learn from this? What will you do differently in your projects as a result of Mark's experience? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and found it stimulating, please leave a comment or a like or both or share it with others on social media. If you think these videos are useful and interesting, let me know and I'll make more of them. If you want to appear in one, let me know. For other videos on project management topics, take a look at my video channel. For articles on project management and PMO topics, visit my website pragmaticpmo.com or follow me on Twitter at pragmaticpmo. To connect with me more personally, search LinkedIn for Ken Burrell Pragmatic PMO. In the meantime, until the next time, thanks for watching.